Hello everybody, my name is Diana and welcome to our quality control interactive tutorial here in Galaxy Training Academy. Now we are at the moment looking at the tutorial and we're going to cover all the content of the tutorial together. We're going to perform uh, how the use of the tools in Galaxy together and you should be able to answer questions related to the quality of your next generation sequencing samples at the end of this tutorial. So the questions that we will cover are related to how to perform quality control on our next generation sequence raw data, the quality parameters that you should check on your data set, and also once we have identified bad quality nucleotides, but quality sequences, how do we improve this quality? How do we trim, we filter data sets, etc. This will be done with short sequencing reads, with long reads, and we will use multiple tools like FastQC, MultiQC, Nanoplot to read the sequences qualities. Let's get started. Now we're going to jump back into use galaxy.eu. And the first thing we're going to do is to create a new history. So we create a new history and we add a new name to our history. Let's call this quality control part one. We click save. And here's in our new history. Now we have to import our data from the tutorial. So we can click on this hat. And here you can search for the tutorial that you need. In, in my case, I already have the quality control here. And we're going to scroll down and go into the link that has my file. So this is a microbiome sample from a snake. We're going to copy this link because we are importing data from Zenodo via a link. So we, we just need to copy it, click on the side, we go back to the usegalaxy.eu, click upload, paste fetch data, we paste here the link and we click start. We close this. Now we wait some moments until our data is uploaded. Perfect. Our data has been loaded and we can click on here on the data and have a small preview of the content of the file. We could also click on the eye and display the actual content of the file. So here we see the structure of a FASTQ file from sequences. Now a sequence of a FASTQ file, normally it starts with an at. Now in this line, we have information about the machine. We could have information about the species. We could have information about barcodes from our sequence. The second line that includes all of these nucleotides, now my the area here is too small to display the, the second line as one line, but this is the second line of the, of the file. And this includes the sequences, and the, here we see all the nucleotides. The third line is a plus, always begins with a plus, and sometimes it includes the same information as the line one or some extra information of the, of the sequence or about the sequence. The fourth line, this is where the quality of each individual nucleotide that was called by the machine is added. And this is normally uh, added in the format that is called ASC2. So these are characters that the machine interprets as uh, numbers for each nucleotide. That will give us something that is called the FRED score. Okay, we go back to the tutorial here. Scroll down, here's the information that I just shared with you. 
We look at this and here we have details of the quality scores. What does the quality really mean? Okay, so the latest sequencers like Sanger or Illumina 1.8 and plus will use the FRED scores plus 33 to assign um, an, a value of scores where nucleotides are being called. So this is the ASC2 code and this code is then assigned um, a value, a score for each nucleotide. As we see here, for example, I is 40, or red plus 33, and G could be around 38. So details on what a FRED score is, quality score is, you can find it as well in the slides and how to calculate it. Well, it's in, in here you have the, the quality that is given to you by the machine. And you can replace the quality, whether it's 38, 40, or very low quality 10 into this formula and solve for P and then you get the probability of the base being called incorrectly. And then you get the percentage of accuracy in which your base was called correctly or not by the machine. So of course we want good quality nucleotides to remain in our sequences. Now, the lower the FRED score, the worse the quality is. The higher the FRED score, the better the quality is. So here we have some questions, and one of them is, which character correspond to the worst FRED score for Illumina 1.8 plus? And I think it's the exclamation mark that we see. Here we have an exclamation mark. This is a zero in the FRED plus 33 and Illumina as well as a zero. The other question is, what is the FRED quality score of a third nucleotide of the first sequence? So if you remember, um, in our sequence, the, the third nucleotide here from our first sequence is the one-in. So one-in is G. And if we look back, the G is about 38, according to this, to this score. So here we have the solution. And the accuracy of this nucleotide, of course, if we sold for P and we replace Q with 38, we will have the accuracy of 99.99%. Okay. Now let's move on. So the first thing we will do is to check the quality of our sequences using FASTQE. So FASTQE is a tool that allows us to visualize the quality of our samples using emojis. We only need the mean and the rest is correct. We run the tool and we wait. Perfect, it's done. So. We click on the results on the output of the tool and we can also inspect it. Now, this is a report that the FASTQE tool gives us and here you can see the score for each um, emoji in usually in the documentation of the FASTQE tool. You can see this um, if we go back to the tutorial, you click here and while clicking here will take you to the tool documentation and you will have the interpretation of the emoji assigned to a FRED quality score and also what it means for in the ASC2 code. Okay, so 
just by looking at it, um, we hope that the thread scores for our sequences is not less than 20 because this means that we will have to get rid of those to make our sequencing reads better quality. But here, at least in the first part is okay, but then in the last part of the sequence, which usually the quality readouts start to decline as well halfway through the sequences by the sequencer, the probability of calling the base wrongly by the sequencers is worse half through the end of the of the sequencing. And we have a question, it's like, what is the lowest score in this data set? Well, if we look at the documentation and what the emojis mean in terms of thread score, it would be the cat, the sad cat with the tear. It's um, assigned a thread score of 13, which is below 20, and this is not very good. Okay, so now that we know how to assess the quality with this fast UE, which gives us the mean, the mean of all the qualities of the sequences, the, all the sequences that we have in our file, we can go into fast QC. So FastQC is another tool that you can find in Galaxy that reads quality reports. So what we can do here is just already the text or file, so it's just inputting our data that we want to run the, the FastQC on. We don't select anything else. The rest is okay, and we click Run Tool. Now we wait for our output. The output of this tool is two files. We have a web page and we have the raw data. Okay, so we have our output. We have the web page, which is an HTML file, and we have the raw data. And we're going to take a look at the web page. So here we have basic statistics information, like the file name, we have the file type, which is a conventional base calls, the encoding to assign quality scores, and the technology used was Sanger or Illumina 1.9. We have the name of the total sequences that the file contains, which is 812. The total basis sequences that were flagged as poor quality the length of our sequence, that is 296 for all the sequences, and the percentage of one in cytosine, which is 44. But here we can see um, this plot, not very well, but if we go back to the tutorial, it's the same plot. And here the plot shows us that in the beginning, we have a very good quality reads. So the, the machine is able to accurately call the right nucleotides. But when we get to the middle of the sequences, then the quality starts to decline. Because as we see here, in the background, we have the good quality scores on the y-axis are covered by green. But as the quality declines, the background is changing color into orange, yellow orange, and then a red for the bad quality ones. So the Y axis contains our quality scores and the X is the position of the nucleotide. In the beginning, it gives us individual qualities for the nucleotide until 10 and then it starts to, like, to bend the data. So data pinning. Here we have the blue line that it's the mean uh, value, so you see it declines as well, and the median, the median also gets worse halfway through the sequence. So yes, um, we have in our sequence indeed base that have less than 20 quality score. So in this case, we will have to get rid of them.
Okay, so we go back to our galaxy. And as you can see, it's the same. It's the same plot. We have more information like per tile sequence quality and so on, but let's go into the per base and content. It's good. So N content means like the machine was not able to assign a specific nucleotide to the sequence and it gives us it gives uh, the sequence the the N sequence length distribution, it's about right, and we know that it's on average 296 the length of our sequence here. Another important thing to check is the adapter content. So we do have adapter content in our sequence here. We have Nexteta transposiase sequences as adapters, and we have some other types of adapters from poly-A poly -A adapter. So we will have to get rid of this. So maybe if I go here, And this other sequence quality profiles. Uh, this is when there's problems with the machine and the sequencer will generate these types of plots. This is indeed problem of the sequencer, so you will have to contact the facility, the sequencing facility, to to ask for these results. Why are why are my sequences looking like this? Okay. So as we saw earlier. The Nextera Transpose ES sequence adapter that we will have to get rid of. So one of the questions that we have in the tutorial is what is the thread encoding used in this FastQC? So from our file, from our FastQ file, we know that the encoding technology used was Illumina 1.9. Okay, so if we go back to our tutorial. We have here other plots, details of these plots you can also find in the tutorial and read by yourself. So let's go into trim and filter short reads. Now we would like to cut or trim low quality score regions of our sequence. They could be at the beginning or the end of the sequence, and we also should remove adapters because adapters are not really part of our sequencing. And these are added in usually so that we have uh, all the sequences in the same length, for example. So we have to trim them because these do not represent real sequences in our file. In our case, we saw that there is an Xtera adapter from in the Illumina website, which includes these nucleotide sequences. And this is normally added to the three prime end of the reads. We could also fil filter, and we should also filter sequences that are less than 20 thread score, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, so our next step, to trim this is to go into the tools and look for cut adapt. Cut adapt is a tool that allows us to remove adapter sequences from either FastQ or FASTA files. Now here we have to customize a little bit this tool. We have a single end, this is correct, and it has already detected our file. Then we go to reads once because we we have an adapter in the three prime end with from Nextera. We click enter custom sequence. And let me go back to the tutorial, copy this. Copy the sequence here. And the rest we leave as it is because we don't have an, any more adapters. 
to add. Now we have some adapter handling options and we will not edit anything here. We have other trim reading options, the quality cutoff from our read, which is only one read, should go above 20 as we mentioned earlier. And we should also span this read filtering options. In minimum length, we will put 20 here. Because we don't want super short sequences. In the output section, here we will select report. And then, yeah, we will be able to ins inspect the report. We click run tool, and now we have to wait for our output. Okay, our output is ready. Here we have the coded sequence. So these sequences are trim. So as you can see, they don't longer have the adapters. So these are the quality control sequences from our file because we have filtered out bases that have less than 20 quality score and we have also trimmed out the next data adapter. This is the this will be the file. This is the file that you will use for your analysis downstream. Now here is our report. Here in our report we see that this is from Cut Adapt, the version of it, the summary and the total reads process. The amount of reads that had adapters it was 56.8%. We didn't have reads that were too short. So the reads that passed the filter 100%. The quality trim, so we had about 35.1% quality trim basis. And so on. Okay, there's more information also about the, the adapter, the sequence of the adapter, and extra information on what the tool did for us. So the questions that in the tutorial were asked is uh, related to the use of this cut adapt. Uh, what percentage of reads contain the adapters? And it was 56.8. How many reads were trimmed because of bad quality? 35.1%. And as I said earlier, no reads were too short. Okay. So now that we have used cut adapt, we can now inspect the quality of our new sequence with FastQC and FastQE. Now let's go with FastQE first. We put in the output of cut adapt, the mean. We are also going to start running already fast QC. We only make sure that this is the correct file from the cut adapt output tool, and then we run. And now we wait. Okay, perfect. So fast QE is done. We click on the eye and we see that the sad cat is no longer here. The back quality bases have been trimmed and this should all be bases with more than 20 thread score quality. So indeed our file is now quality controlled. Now if we go look at the FastQC report, we see that the adapter content has been removed. Okay, we don't longer see it here. So it's flat, it should look like a flat line that those we see in, in the graph, no adapter content. We can also use this window manager and go back to the first output. And now we have two 
cannot but this all of the spaces have been removed and we have this very nice clean fastqe report before we go into quality control part two we will finish this part with how do we process multiple data sets especially because when we have sequences we usually have or could have paired end data so we have the five prime and the three prime so we go into this part of the tutorial and here it explains a little bit of the process paired end data and what are they usually named by the facility so normally you will get this fastq files and one will have the R1 and the other one, which is the forward read, the, the, for, the reverse read will have the R2 on it as a name. So usually the facility will put the sample name or sample A, the forward read as R1 and dot fastq because that's the, the file extension and the same for the reverse one. So we're going to do the same as we did before. We're going to copy these links and import this data from Zenodo. So we copy both. We go back into our usegalaxy.eu. We click on import. We can paste fetch data again. We paste our links and we click start. Now we have here our data that is importing from Zenodo. Okay, perfect. Our data is here. We inspect it a little bit. And let me deactivate this. And here we have again that starts with at. And then we have sequence some extra info and the quality. So what we're going to do here is to run the FastQC on both data sets. So FastQC is already here. We want to click on multiple data sets and we can select the other one. Yeah, okay. So we have selected or latest input the latest input data and we do nothing else we run to okay we have the first results from the forward read now we have both okay so we can check the the site the html file you can also download it you don't have to look at uh, at the file in here you can also click download and take a look at the file directly. But yeah. Okay, so here we have the file name. This is a file type, conventional base call, the technology encoding, and the sequence length 37, the percentage of one in cytosine. And here we see that the quality score is not so bad. I would say um, there are some variability on the sequences, especially at the end, but overall it looks pretty okay, I would say. And here you can have a, a summary in which you see that in general, there's also not adapter content here. In general, it looks pretty good, at least for the forward read. So we may go to inspect the reverse read uh -huh. here we have some per base quality it's a little bit different and we do have bad quality sequences that are more bad quality sequences than in compared to the forward read so here's a question after inspecting this what should we do and what do you think about the results so in this case we have the forward and the reverse reads that don't have the same quality. So we must try to match the quality of both reads to be ready for downstream analysis. We have to trim our bad qualities and we could also 
take a look as well as the results in another tool so we can have a better overview multi QC call the tool better overview of both simultaneously now here we have the output of the fast QC so we can run this multi QC if we have the raw data the logs from our fast QC output so we go into multi QC insert raw data insert raw data right and uh, we can we can you select yeah we have to select both because this is for collection here we have the fast QC on data 11 fast QC on data 10 which is the forward read and then Oh, it accepts multiple data sets so we can just pick both directly here okay we have both so this are the results which tool was used to generate the logs the fast qc the output of the fast qc should be the raw data and then we input them here we are able to select multiple data sets at once and that's it we run the tool then we also get stats as output of the multi QC tool and we will get the web page now this web page is very nice because it's very interactive okay perfect so now we have the results of the multi QC we have this web page and as you can see is a very interactive you can watch a tutorial video on how to read and use this website but in general it's the same information similar information as you can find in the fast queues from fast qc here we have the duplicated sequences the one inside the same content and the total sequences we have the also sequence counts and in here it's very nice we can see directly our two samples and how they compare so for instance here we can we can check that if I zoom in the forward read has better quality than the reverse one can also zoom in and check okay we can also export the plot so we see here the Fred score on the y-axis and the base pairs on the x-axis so here we see that uh, per sequence quality scores is higher on the forward and lower on the reverse now it, it now it's the question of what, what we should do so in this case we should trim the bad quality sequences there is no adapter content as we check from the fast queue we can also check this here I believe duplications adapter content so here it's there is no samples found with any adapter contamination okay so we don't have to do this adapter trimming because there's no adapters it's always good to check and trim bad sequences or bad quality sequences now we go back into the tool search engine and we type cop adapt we check for a tool and in this case we have a pair and we will input here the fastq file 1 and it's already fastq file 2 so we leave this section alone because we don't have any adapters to trim we are not handling any adapters so we don't need to do anything under the section 
but we may go into other read streaming options. So the quality cutoff here, we're going to put it 20 and 20. We want only bases with 20 quality and up for both of our reads. And the same here, we are discarding very short read lengths. Now we scroll down and of course we want to select report and run the tool. Our data is ready. So now we see the two outputs for reads, which is our, these are our trimmed and our filtered sequences. And here we get a report. This report, it will tell us the total reads per process, 100,000. We, in this case, did have pairs that were too short, 1.4% pairs were too short, so they were excluded, and the amount of pairs that passed the filtering. Now, in this case, we have the quality trimmed, and the read one was 44,164, and we did have worse quality reads on the reverse read, so we trimmed more basis pairs. And here in total, it tells us the, the amount of filtered bases. So we say that the pairs that were too short again were 1,376. These were removed. And the amount of base pairs per quality that were trimmed, that so it leaves us only with 20 up scored quality basis. Perfect. So now you are able to use this trimmed files, this outputs in your downstream analysis. Okay, so this is the first part of quality control. And in the second part, we will touch on the long reads only using the tool Nanoplot. Thanks so much. Okay, so we are going to start the quality control part two. And if we go back to the tutorial, this includes the assessing quality with nanoplot. And this is for long reads only. So in case you have sequences with long reads, we can check the quality of them with nanoplot as it provides uh, basic statistics and nice plots uh, to review the quality of them. So the first thing we're going to do is, of course, create a new history. We're going to click here in the plus and say quality control part two. OK, so we have to import the data and this is FASTQ file. It's a FASTQ file and it's from PacBio Hi-Fi Reads. It's also from Sonoto, so we're gonna copy the link. We will go to upload, um, paste, fetch data, start. Okay, now we have to wait a little bit until our data is uploaded. We will type here nanoplot. Click on nanoplot. And we have to select the file. We leave this as it is. Yeah, because we only have one file. It has already detected our file and options for customizing plots created. We select this one. For filtering or transforming inputs prior to plotting, we leave this alone. We don't touch it. So we go into specify the bivariate formats of the plots. We select both of them, dot and KDE. And show the 
and 50 mark in the read length histogram, we say yes. And that's it, we run the tool and we wait for our output. Here we see we have another HTML, which will be a, a website, the nanostats in tabular form, and we will also get an output of the data, data one. Okay, finally, we have our results and we can inspect our nanoplot report. Here we get as well as summary statistics, the number of reads, number of faces, median, mean, standard deviation, longest reads. And here we get some quality metrics. We also get a weighted histogram of read lengths that in the x-axis we have the read length and in the y-axis we have the number of faces. We get weighted histogram of read length after log transformation and so on. So we get here the average read quality and the average read length. It seems like the reads with shorter lengths sometimes may have better, better quality than the longer reads. The longer it gets the read, I guess the quality is still good because it's above 20. So here you, we can interact with the plot and see the coordinates and you can see the length from the x-axis and the average red quality from the y-axis. So yeah, it seems like all of them are above 20. That's pretty good. So these are all the plots that we get from the nanoplot. And as you can see, it's a, it's a report that we get. We also can get uh, in a tabular format, just the plain statistics that we see from the report in the HTML file version. And of course, there are no stats pulse filtering because we didn't perform any filtering, I would say. So yeah, this is about it. It's just another way to get a summary statistics of the quality metrics of your long read sequences. So you can play around with this report, interact a little bit with the plot, and check your sequences results. So it looks pretty good as, as per how we overall see here from the sample. Especially we can appreciate here the read length and the average read quality using this nice dot plot. Okay. For our last topic, we will create a new history and we will go a, a little bit back to the tutorial. And as we already checked the nanoplot tool to assess the quality of our long reads, we scroll down and we finally reach our assess quality with Pico QC nanopore only. So this is just for nanopore uh, data. And for this, you will need a specific type of file. It's not a fast Q file. It's a text file that is generated by Oxford Nanopore based colors, such as Goopy or the older AlbaCore based color. So with Pico QC, which is the tool that we, we will use, we will be able to assess the quality of this Nanopore data. Now, we already created a new history. We're going to import our data from the tutorial. We copy and before we import it, we're going to rename this as quality control part 
three, and this is the nanopore part. All right, so now we're going to go to upload. We are already here in place fetch data part of the upload, and um, I think we can click start. It will just take a moment once it's uploaded. You see it. So to use the Pico QC, we will need this text file. But of course, you also have a fast Q file, um, compressed fast Q file that you can you can use from this technology base color. Alrighty, so. We now go to the tool search engine and we type here Pico. Okay, it was already there, but Pico QC. Pico QC. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Pico QC. Here it is. Now, as you can see, it has already detected the accepted format, which is a text file, tabular file from our history. And that's about it. We only have to to do that. So there's some other questions or parameters that you can adjust here. Output JSON summary file. It's already there. The minimum quality to consider as read as pass is seven, and this is something to point out when you are dealing with nanopore data. You will not have such high quality scores as we had in the previous sequences files that we checked. So nothing wrong with that. It's just the type of data is like this. So yeah, we will get this results. Okay, it's ready. And as we see here, we have a report as an HTML file and a summary, a JSON summary. So we're going to click on the HTML. And we have here the report. This is a general summary. We have all reads. Base call reads. Test reads, all reads. So if a base is, a base called is over seven, and quality score, it will, the Guppy will detect it as passed. So this is why the distribution looks a little bit different when we see the pass reads and all reads. And here we have the thread quality as well on the pass reads, all reads. Another distribution where you can see median, mean, quality scores. We can also see density of the base calls and you can play around, zoom in, zoom out. Yes, double click to zoom out. If I do this, then I can also see it closely. Okay. So yeah. Um, we have more information of the quality overall, channel activity over time, and so on. So these are all the plots that are generated by the Pico QC report. We can go back to the tutorial, and there is more information, detailed information about the plots and what they mean and how to read them. If you're interested in learning more about this nanopore topic and this plot that generates the Pico QC report, please feel free to read through them, check them and learn from them. But you did it, good job. You have reached the finish end of the tutorial. And to wrap up, I just want to say thank you for going through the tutorial with me. I hope this was useful for you to conclude we have learned to use at least um, for quality control four tools plus the cut adapt tool for trimming and filtering bad sequences. So for short reads, we have the fast QE tool that we use with emojis and we learn how to inspect the quality with these emojis. 
And for short and long reads, then for both of them, we also learn to use FastQC. And the raw data from FastQC can also be input in MultiQC to check for all your samples at the same time in a more interactive platform. So you can also use MultiQC. Now for long reads only, we have checked with the tool Nanoplot on Galaxy and um, yeah, this is also shown histograms, distribution, plots, and we can also inspect the quality there. And if you have nanopore data, and then you can use Pico QC. So good job, you did it, you reached the end of our tutorial. You may click here, I finished tutorial, congrats, and thanks for letting us know. And yes, just if you have any questions, please uh, get in touch. We're happy to assist you. Alrighty, so have a good day, a rest of your day, and thanks very much.